Welcome to week two, where we are going to discuss igneous rocks and volcanic activity. Um, in this first video, we're going to talk about what igneous rocks are and how they form. In the second video, we'll get into how you identify igneous rocks. In uh, the third video, we'll talk about major volcanic landforms and how they're related to viscosity. And then in the fourth video, we'll talk about the major hazards that exist and associated with volcanic activity. So what are igneous rocks? Well, igneous rocks cool from magma or lava. Magma is molten rock that exists below the surface of the earth. Lava is molten rock that exists at the surface of the earth. Um, the grain size of your igneous rocks corresponds to how fast or slow that magma or lava has cooled. Large grains equals slow cooling, so that magma, uh, the, the building blocks within that magma have had a chance to find each other within that rock. If there's uh, small grain sizes, uh, very fine grain, that means that it's cooled super fast, so those building blocks didn't have a chance to find one another. And the color or shade um, corresponds to the minerals that are present. So we'll go into those details a little bit more in the identification section. So how do these rocks form? Well, they're related to plate tectonics. So we have areas where we have two plates colliding at convergent zones where a plate is subducted to create magma. Divergent areas where two plates pull apart and magma is created. And then hot spots where uh, we have volcanic activity as well. So to kind of get into more detail here, um, how magma form is at each of these locations. Well, at convergent boundaries where we can see up top here, what happens is the oceanic crust, which has been sitting at the bottom of the ocean soaked with water, is um, pulled by gravity down below this continental crust on the other side. Once that crust reaches a certain depth, the water in that crust gets forced out of the plate goes into the surrounding asthenosphere, and that water actually acts as a flux to cause that asthenosphere to melt um, at a much lower temperature than it normally would. So it creates a zone of molten rock that then is now less dense than the surrounding solid rock and rises to the surface and makes its way up and erupts as volcanoes. Now sometimes that magma doesn't reach the surface and it cools inside the earth. We call those intrusive igneous rocks. Um, and sometimes it makes it up to the surface and we call those extrusive. So this idea of water helping to melt that asthenosphere is called flux melting, you can see there. Um, at divergent plate boundaries, we have what's called decompression melting. We have these two plates being pulled apart from one another, as you can see here. And as those plates are being pulled away from each other, the pressure on the asthenosphere in the center is released. And because that we have that drop in pressure, the magma then turns to a liquid because this uh, magma, the mantle that exists below this crust, is under high amounts of pressure. That increased pressure causes that magma even though it said it's uh, well past its melting point, the increased pressure causes it to not melt at that temperature. So it's a solid. But once that pressure is released, then that magma is then created at that boundary. So that's called decompression melting. And then at um, areas where we have um, hot spots like Hawaii or Yellowstone, we, we uh, call those mantle plumes where uh, for some reason, still not fully understood, uh, there's some theories that exist, uh, but we have a mantle plume that originates down um, at the core mantle boundary that then rises very quickly to the surface in the middle of a plate. So we have um, volcanic activity that's not associated with an actual plate boundary. And those are called mantle plumes. Now all of these magmas originate in the asthenosphere or pretty close uh, to the core. So that means that these magmas start out with a mafic or ultramafic composition. Well, how do we get these lighter colored th rocks like granite and um, rhyolites. Well, the reason for that is because as that magma rises through things like the, the oceanic or the continental crust, it takes a while for it to rise. And as it's rising, it's slowly cooling. And some of the higher temperature minerals like um, 
olivine, pyroxene, and amphibole. These are your mafic minerals. They're darker in color, if you remember from last week. Those minerals form at higher temperatures. So once the magma starts to cool, those minerals start to crystallize and they settle out of the magma and then are isolated from that magma. So we're left with more of felsic minerals in that magma chamber. So uh, we call that um, partial melting. Or not partial mel melting, sorry. Uh, we call it fractional crystallization, where some stuff is crystallized and some stuff does not. Partial melting and assimilation are very similar. Uh, this magma chamber is rising through the crust. It's melting the surrounding rocks. So if the minerals that are in the surrounding rocks are felsic, have lower melting temperatures, they're going to melt and become a part of that magma chamber. So we have that magma chamber becoming more and more felsic through fractional crystallization, pulling those mafic minerals out, and partial melting of the surrounding crust, incorporating more felsic mag um, materials into that magma chamber. So you can uh, look at more detailed descriptions and diagrams in your textbooks, uh, which will be very helpful for you. So that's how we get different types of magmas that are produced. And depending on how much, how thick this crust is, the longer that magma takes to rise, the more and more felsic it's going to become. So what's happening in our neck of the woods? Well, um, we are right about here in this map. Here's the Seattle area, California. What we have off of the coast of Oregon, Washington, is a subduction zone where we have two plates colliding. The Juan de Fuca plate right here is oceanic. It's being subducted or forced below the North American plate over here. We also have a divergent plate boundary between the Juan de Fuca and the Pacific plate. And then we also have transform boundaries as well. So we have a little bit of everything in our neck of the woods. So these cascade volcanoes that we have, like Mount Hood, which, and uh, um, Mount Adams that you can see from campus pretty often. Those volcanoes are being formed from this subduction zone and the flux melting that's happening deep inside the earth. So pretty neat stuff. So it's kind of a brief overview into what igneous rocks are and how they form. Make sure you check your textbook out for some more detailed descriptions. <laughs>